Thanks so much for tuning in for the Drawing for Adults class. This is the Watercolor and Ink Landscapes class that is part of the Watercolor and Ink series that we just started last week um, with the flower, Watercolor and Ink Flower uh, project. And this class is offered as a partnership between the Ann Arbor District Library and the Ann Arbor Art Center. My name is Peyton Cook, and I'd love to see you share your art that you make from today's class using the hashtag art at AADL on social media. Um, like I said, this is a series that we're doing with watercolor and ink. If you don't have watercolors, but you're interested in getting some, I do recommend this set. It's a nice travel set by Windsor Newton and it has a variety of colors, which is great. But if you have other watercolors at home, those will be great. In addition to watercolors, you will need some pens. And I really like the Pigma Micron pens. They come in a variety of sizes. Not that you need that many of them, but the smaller the number, the smaller the size of the mark that you can make. So you can see here that the ones at the top are really small, while the ones on the larger, at long at the bottom, we are a little bit larger. So. These are nice because they don't bleed and they're archival, they don't fade at all over time, which is always really helpful when you're doing a lot of detail work and drawing. You don't want to come back to your drawing a few years later and see that the drawing has faded or uh, changed in different ways. So um, I'm gonna just show you the beginning stages of a watercolor painting here that I just started. And this is fairly loose. It's not super detailed, but there's a little bit of detail still that you can see here. And I would encourage you to consider your options as far as how detailed you really want to get with this. You're going to be going back with ink, so you actually don't have to put a lot of detail into the watercolor portion. It's really up to you as to what part you want to really focus on. I'm a big painter, so I love to add some details in with the brushwork. I just enjoy that part more so than the ink personally, but it's really up to you um, for how, mu how much you want to push that. So you can see here in the foreground, I am adding a little extra detail than what's in the background, and that's because in the foreground, you generally are going to see more detail, more um, structure, colors are going to be a lot more saturated, um, and then colors and detail wise in the background, your colors are going to be a lot cooler and also you're not going to see the same level of detail that you'll really see in the foreground. So I am putting a little extra effort here in the foreground. Okay, so here's the finished piece with the watercolor portion. So adding ink to this would then be the next step, of course. Um, and I wanted to show this part with real watercolors, but I'm actually going to show um, a full process video here in uh, digital art using watercolor and ink digitally so that you can really see that whole process um, because ink does translate really well digitally, whereas watercolor is not quite as great, but will still work pretty well. Now, when you are using your watercolors, I do recommend sketching it out quickly with a pencil first just to get some basic lines drawn in. You don't have to do this. It's really up to you how you want to do this, but I recommend adding a couple little lines really lightly in pencil before you begin. Now, some of those lines you'll probably be tracing over with your ink pen, so it's okay if it shows through a little bit, but usually I like to draw really lightly with my pencil so that because the watercolor paint is so transparent, you're going to see everything, um, you know, underneath it. And you can't really erase the pencil once you paint on top of it with watercolors. So you can see the way I'm adding this. And again, this is a digital. This is a little different than doing it, um, you know, with an actual paintbrush. But that's why I wanted to show those other um, little time-lapse videos and photos of my watercolor painting just so that you can get a better idea of what that looks like um, in with the actual paints, um, the ink pen drawing part, um, I think that actually is a pretty good representation digitally of what that would look like. So um, that's why I didn't include that in the other um, the other part of the video. But here you can see I'm just layering in lots of different textures, lots of colors. Again, with that landscape idea, 
The another thing, in addition to things that are in the foreground and the front being more detailed and things being in the background less detailed and more blurry, but also you tend to see that cooler colors receive color colors go cooler colors go back into space. So that helps give that illusion of 3D space that we want to give when painting or drawing a landscape. And that can be challenging sometimes to create this three-dimensional space on a 2D surface. So we have to use different things such as a color and detail and saturation to really give the viewer the idea that this is a 3D space. So that's why those colors that are the, the mountain colors in the background are bluer. And even the trees that are kind of in the background, the grasses and stuff like that, are a little bit bluer as well than the colors that are here in the foreground. So anyway, as I'm going here, you can probably see I am just layering in lots of different textures, um, all sorts of things here. So, you know, this is getting fairly detailed once again. You know, I could easily stop here. I could have stopped probably a few um, moments ago and left it and then just drawn a lot of this in. But I do enjoy the painting process, um, personally, maybe even more so than the inking part. Um, though there are moments where I really allow myself to just really enjoy the drawing part, but I'm much more of a painter um, than a drawer. And though I love drawing, I love painting more. So I tend to get caught up more in the painting part of the process than the drawing. Um, and so I kind of tend to take this, um, at least for this kind of project, I do enjoy landscapes quite a bit. Um, but I really like to focus more on the painting part and then just use the pen to really accent some certain details that would be hard to get otherwise. So um, I'm just gonna keep adding different colors here to really enhance that three-dimensional space as well as some other textures.
Now I want to show something that's really going to change the overall look of this piece, and that's what it is. It's going to be adding a wash on top of everything that's kind of an orangey color. And look how much this changes the way that my colors are. And so you can pause this and go back and look at that and see how that changes the whole mood of the painting. It's really cool. Um, and so now I'm going to go back in. Let's just pretend like this had time to dry, right? So you want to make sure before you go in with your ink that your painting is completely dry. And once it is dry, then you can go back in with your ink pen and you can start adding maybe textural details. You could even add, incorporate patterns or different things like that. You can also keep a looser, sketchier line. You don't have to have it perfectly traced. You can see those mountains have like two to four lines that are kind of wiggling. Um, one thing that I like to do is this agitated line. And what that means is that as I'm drawing, I'm kind of intentionally shaking my hand. Now, some of you might be laughing because I've heard you guys say this before, where you're like, oh, my hand always shakes when I'm drawing because I just am nervous or whatever. Um, and that's fine. Um, that actually you might have um, kind of um, an advantage here because that can be a really cool style to have that looser kind of approach to drawing where it's much more of a sketch. It's just kind of here's this impression of this line. It's close enough. It's a little wiggly and wonky, but that's actually will look really cool. Um, but you can also be more precise here as well. Personally, I really like the looser lines. They just kind of, I don't know, make me happy for some reason. Um, and I think they're really fun to do. have fun with this project and I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video today. I hope that you will uh, post it on social media and use the hashtag art at AADL. I'd love to see your work.